Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to the latest installment in our complete comics collection tour. This is a multi-shelf, multi-episode series of videos in which I take you through the complete collection of For the Love of Comics. Today we have receded to the deepest recesses of the apartment because there are giants that live in the canyon. In this huge storage shelf, which is dominated by our Lego collection, there are sets that have yet to be made, sets that have been made previously and packed away, spare parts, things like that. This shelf also houses the largest comics in our collection. It's been selected because of its incredible depth. This is the only piece of furniture in the house that can hold the comics that it does. So we're going to ignore these sections on the left and the right, focus only on the middle section. Some of these I've taken a closer look at in dedicated videos that are linked during this video, and yet others I fully intend to make special videos on. So I'm not expecting this to be a very long episode because I'm not going to get into great detail. I just want to show these books to you, but what I plan and what I actually happens don't always coincide. So let's get started taking a closer look at the gigantic editions housed in shelf 14. The top shelf over here contains four of Dark Horse's gallery editions, as well as two volumes of Little Nemo in Slumberland, the complete strips from 1905 to 1927 brought out by Tarshan. But the first and tallest book on this shelf is this one. Monograph by Chris Ware. We've seen a couple of Chris Ware books on this channel, Jimmy Corrigan and Building Stories, and this is another masterful work by Chris Ware. This one, a graphic memoir in which he stitches together family history, early drawings, unpublished comics, into a magnificent piece of art that is unlike any other autobiography I've ever read. This might seem like a thing for only Chris Ware aficionados, but I think that almost anyone can enjoy this unique take on autobiography. In true Chris Ware style, there are little pieces and objects that are stuck and pasted on, making this more than just a book. This is such a marvelous piece that I really feel that an entire episode should be dedicated to this. Let me know if that interests you. Next, we have the two volumes of The Complete Little Nemo by Windsor McKay, volume 1, 1905 to 1909. And this volume was featured in my Little Nemo video, one of the three gorgeous editions to read this collection in. And this is a brand new acquisition, volume two, also from Tarshan, collecting strips from 1910 to 1927. As you can see, this is still in the shrink wrap. I haven't opened it yet. I was thinking not an unboxing exactly, but I could make a video in which I open and go through this for the first time with you. Next up are two gallery editions from Dark Horse of Usagi Yojimbo, my favorite fella. This is volume one, Samurai and Other Stories, and I have a video taking a closer and detailed look at this, which I'll link in the description below and in the top right corner of your screen. And I also have a special video for the second volume, The Artist and Other Stories. These gallery editions are replications of original art pages, and these two Sage Ojimbo gallery editions are among my most treasured comics. Another gallery edition from Dark Horse that I really love is this one of ElfQuest by Wendy and Richard Peeney. ElfQuest is a superb adult fantasy series that, that is as groundbreaking in independent publishing as it is in long form storytelling. And this collection of original art pages is just magnificent. A great series showcased beautifully in this gallery edition. And the final book in this section is a shorter gallery edition, this one of Lone Wolf and Cub, the classic samurai manga, which is some of the best action comics that I I've ever read. Each of these gallery editions has its own charm and beauty based on the series, but this particular edition with twin replications of the original manga pages is perhaps the most accomplished of these gallery editions. Again, something I would love to take a closer look at in a special video. Moving down to the second shelf, I'm going to ignore the first book over here in this box. It's a recent acquisition, but I have plans for it in some upcoming videos, and I kind of want it to be a surprise. So the next book is The Fantastic Four Behold Galactus from Marvel Comics. This giant edition of a Stan Lee Jack Kirby story, as well as others, was the subject of my first and only unboxing video, Unboxing Galactus. And you can get a closer look at these pages in that video, which again, I'll link in the description below in the top right corner of your screen. The next book over here is the Sunday Press edition of Walton Skizik's designed and edited by Chris Ware. 
Sunday Press reproduces old newspaper comic strips and this volume of Walton Skizix is a reprint of the Sunday pages of the strip Gasoline Alley. Drawn and Quarterly brings out the dailies of this classic strip but those are in black and white and these Sunday strips were quite different from the more uh, everyday life daily strips. These were a little more fantastical, a little more philosophical and like the Sunday Press reproductions of Little Nemo in Slumberland, this is just a gorgeous edition. The cover of this edition is another one of those fold-out wraparound covers that Chris Ware is so good at doing. We've seen him do it for the hardcover of Jimmy Corrigan as well as the McSweeney's 14 volume. And this is just a beautiful book. This beautiful book from Sunday Press is followed by two more beautiful books from Sunday Press. This is Little Nemo in Slumberland, So Many Splendid Sundays by Windsor McKay, brought out by Sunday Press, collecting select Sunday pages from this classic turn-of-the-century comic strip. This book was also featured in my Little Nemo in Slumberland and gorgeous editions to read them in. As far as an available, authentic reproduction of these classic strips, I don't think we can do much better than this. This volume was followed by a second one. Many More Splendid Sundays, which is also featured in my Little Nemo video. And the last book on the shelf is the same size as the Sunday Press editions, but isn't from Sunday Press. This is... Little Nemo Dream Another Dream, a tribute to Windsor McKay brought out by Locust Moon Press and by various artists contributing. I do have a closer look at this anthology book in another video of mine, uh, Little Nemo by folks other than Windsor McKay, and I consider this a wonderful achievement in design, in production, and in tribute. And the lowest shelf over here actually has only three comics. These over here are not comics. These are portfolios in which I have uh, my meager collection of comics art. I don't actually own three portfolios worth of art. I have a couple of pieces in each size. And so I've ended up with three portfolios because of bad planning that contain only a couple of pieces each. I'm not a big comic art collector by any means. Some years ago, I saw a friend's collection and I got tempted into looking for pages that really mean a lot to me and I've been able to gather a couple of pieces not expensive not very rare it's really nothing to do with investments and money apart from the size that this shelf is the only place where I can store these portfolios I think they fit quite well thematically with the archival nature of the books on this shelf so you have these gallery editions that are original art pages and you've got things like monograph that contain roughs and comic book pages and then you've got comics art makes sense to me this book over here is Prince Valiant Volume 12 that I showed in one of my new acquisitions videos. I picked this up on sale and thought I would try Prince Valiant because I wasn't sure if it would be too dated. I found Hal Foster's art to be absolutely gorgeous and the stories hold up. They don't feel contemporary by any means but they flow really well and I'm now tempted to uh, take a look at Prince Valiant from the very beginning. Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4 I think are available from Fantagraphics in box sets that might be cheaper than buying them individually. So I think this was a successful thing to try out. And the last two books over here are the giant facsimile editions of The Adventures of Tintin, The Secret of the Unicorn, and the second part, Red Rackham's Treasure. Like with many of the comics on this shelf, I do have a special video for these giant facsimile editions, so check that out for a closer look at these wonderful editions. As promised, I think this was a short and sweet video, but that's because there are more videos coming on some of these books. If you're not subscribed, do so and hit the notification bell to know when that comes up. And let me know in the comments below which one I should do first. This has been For the Love of Comics. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.